Hey there, I'm Dave. I'm a game designer on Moving Out 2. I'm Jack, and I'm the art director. And I'm Lisa, lead artist. Though there are thousands of decisions to be made when making a game, one of the biggest considerations is how you approach accessibility. We wanted to make sure everyone could play Moving Out 2, no matter their skill level, age, physical or intellectual abilities. Building on the work we did for Moving Out 1, in Moving Out 2, we took inspiration from the Game Accessibility Guidelines, which is an amazing resource for game developers. This video breaks down three areas we focused on for Moving Out 2. Assist mode, quality of life accessibility, and art and design. Assist mode can be toggled on and off at the start of any level, and players are never penalised for doing this. You'll also never miss out on any content in the game. Feel free to mix and match the different settings to best suit how you want to play. Turning on longer time limits might help you finish the level, and this can be great with younger kids. Sometimes the added puzzle of organising a messy truck can be overwhelming, so we added a setting that makes your objectives disappear when they've been delivered to the truck. Turning on reduced difficulty removes or slows down some of the more dangerous and tricky obstacles, which makes playing the game just that little bit easier. If in playing a level you're finding it a bit too difficult or you find it's just not for you, with assist mode turned on, you can just skip it. If you want your movers to have super strength with the ability to lift and deliver items with ease, we've got just the setting for you. I bet you know that you can move out, but did you know that in moving out too, you can also move in? If you want to make that easier, Snap Plus makes the delivery of objects extra snappy. No more getting angry at that toaster that won't fit in the little box. We hope you play around, experiment, and have fun with the settings in assist mode. We know we have. Next up are the quality of life accessibility options, which improve the quality of life for all players. For moving out too, we wanted players to be able to remap their inputs to make use of accessible peripherals and controllers. You can even play the game one-handed. We also have toggles for grab and throw, you press once to pick up and press again to release. If you prefer not to have vibration, you can turn that off too. You can scale up the main UI to make it easier to read. We also included an option for a dyslexic friendly font to make it easier for anyone to read. And of course, subtitles are there for anyone who wants them. Lastly, you can reduce or remove screen shake if that's not your thing. The last thing we're gonna talk about are the art and design decisions we made with accessibility in mind. It was really important to us that when we designed levels, we weren't relying on just one design element alone. Rooms needed to be clearly identifiable, not just through colour, but through visual iconography, shape language and environmental storytelling, and of course, love. So portals, for example. Originally, the prototype just used colour to differentiate portals from each other. In addition to colour, we designed icons so pairings would be clearer and we stripped back a lot of the colour in the environment so the portals could really pop. And we're really happy with the way they turned out. With lots of the dynamic levels that we designed for MO2, we found that motion sickness was an issue for playtesters. And me. Thinking creatively, we swapped out constant motion with sequences of smaller movements, as in Serpent's Library and the Ginger District. Instead of rotating the camera in Larger Than Lodge, we used side-to-side -side motion to get the effect of a giant tipping the level from side to side without actually using any rotation. Introducing new mechanics can be tricky, so we often look for clear and creative ways to communicate to players. In Gingerbread Testing Facility, you begin the level by seeing the mechanic in action well before you start moving. Hard candy smashes walls? Check. In Gumball Gumption, we worked and reworked the level multiple times to simplify the moving parts. We really wanted players to be able to get the hang of it without strict instructions. There are so many decisions that go into a game like Moving Out 2, and we've only scratched the surface here. Lots of these decisions happen organically, but others really come about through player feedback, playtesting and QA, and we're super proud of the energy we've put into playtesting the game and are so grateful for the collective efforts of hundreds of people who tested and retested the game over the last few years. We also just want to note that we're not experts in accessibility and we're always learning. If you have any tips or feedback for us, please reach out because we'd love to talk to you. 
We really hope the game plays as well for you as we feel it does for us. And we're excited to share the whole Moving Out 2 experience with you really soon. Thanks for watching. Bye, Bye for now. now.